Back on BTN Live, Rutgers trying to bounce back after a tough season a year ago. A lot coming back, particularly on offense for head coach Chris Ash, Raheem Blackshear, very versatile running back, back in the backfield for the Scarlet Knights. Andy Boo, new defensive coordinator, set to take over at Rutgers as well as the Scarlet Knights look to take a step forward. And, and as Chris Ash joins us, it felt like you had taken a step forward a couple of years ago. And then last year, I know it fell off from, from where you wanted it to be. How do you kind of process that in the, in the context of growing a program? Well, growing a program uh, often rarely goes linear uh, in a straight line. And whether it's business or, or a, a sports team, you know, there's ups, there's downs, there's plateaus. And uh, like you said, from year one to year two, we did take a step up. Last year, we took a step back. And now it's our time to take a huge step up in year four. There's no great secret as to what the challenge is. You guys have to get better offensively. How do you do that? Well, first of all, we got to uh, put together a system that fits our players. And last year, we played a true freshman quarterback, a new offensive coordinator. We come in and say, all right, this is what we want to try to do, w really without any knowledge of what he can do. Now we have a really good grasp of what he can do, what his strengths are, and th the pieces around him, what they're going to look like. So we've made some adjustments offensively to help us block people better and uh, allow the quarterback to have success. Coach, obviously, without giving up things that you don't want other people to know, you have been traditional on offense, uh, more so than a spread team. Is that part of what you're going to go through the, as, as you go forward to reevaluate those type of things? Well, we are. You know, uh, we, we just need to be able to, again, get back to being able to play with fundamentals and identify what we can do up front uh, with our offensive line. And then how do we give the quarterback a chance and then get the ball out in space to some of our playmakers like Raheem Blackshear? So there are a number of things that we've evaluated uh, as we uh, came out of last season. We went through spring. We really like where we ended uh, spring ball with and where we're going in, as we start training camp. How is it important as you as the leader to be that calm influence when so many things are, are maybe not working the way you want to wanted to work for the team, but you still have to have that steady hand and be able to guide it. How tough is that for you? Uh, it's something that you learn, and uh, it was one of the things I took out of last year, just being able to do that. Uh, I've learned over my career, uh, stay humble uh, when things are going well and in the victory, and uh, stay positive when things are not going well, and, and that's what we did, and I think we have a very strong culture. And if you look at our season last year, at the beginning of the season, it wasn't so great. The end of the season, we played our best football. We had a chance to win some games. It's because of that uh, positive environment that we've created and the culture that we have in our locker room. Sounds like you may be more involved in defense this year than last year. Is that true? And if it is, why did you make that decision? Uh, I, I get more involved at the end of last season. Um, just we weren't playing the way that I wanted us to play. We were having too many mental errors. And I got involved then. I thought we improved, but uh, made a change, hired Andy Boo. Andy Boo was with me at the University of Wisconsin as a linebacker coach a few years ago. Um, we always talk football. We believe in the same things. He, he knows how to. I want the defense to look, and, and that's his same philosophy too. Uh, so I want to be more involved in uh, both sides of the ball, and right. not just on defense. I want to be the head coach uh, and be able to look at it from a head coach's seat, uh, and that's why I hired Andy. You mentioned the quarterbacks. How do you see that shaping out this year? Well, well, we came out of spring with Art Sitkowski as the number one quarterback. Uh, he was a freshman, didn't go as well as we wanted it to go, uh, but he learned, he got better. Uh, he had a pretty productive spring. Uh, that's a position that we have to improve on, and we brought in some competition to try to uh, either help him get better or uh, become the starting quarterback. And McLean Carter, we've got another transfer, Johnny Langan, that we're waiting to see if he'll be eligible for this fall. Uh, but we think because of the pieces in the room that we have a lot of tr uh, trust and faith in whoever becomes the quarterback that we can lead the offense and we can be more productive. Coach, you mentioned transfers. What's your feeling on the portal, the transfers, the appeals, that whole issue that we're all dealing with? You know, I, I uh, look at the portal, and I think it was created with really good intentions mm -hmm. uh, to benefit the student-athletes, but I think there were some unintended consequences that came from that. And it gets back to us being able to manage our rosters and be able right. to replace guys that leave. Early signing day in December, you sign 25 guys. In January, February, spring semester, you have guys that leave. You can't replace them. Now player safety becomes a potential issue. You might have to play a player that's not ready to play at a position because there was a transfer. And just being able to manage your roster, period, uh, is, a, is an unintended consequence of the portal. Uh, I think we need to have more transparency uh, and consistency with decisions that are being made. But I think the portal itself is not the issue. It's the things that uh, have happened because of it that we've got to look at and maybe address. So it's the managing the roster by with, with the numbers. You're not, Absolutely. You're not against the portal. That no. makes sense. Yeah. 
as far as being able to evaluate players that enter the portal to see if they may be a fit for for your program, have you had to increase staff, or do some of the guys have a little bit more responsibility than they had before? We're, we're going to monitor it every day, and uh, you see who pops in there. If there's a need uh, or hole that we have to try to fill, then we're going to monitor it every day, and somebody's name pops up in there, and it's, it's somebody that we might have interest in. We're going to get all over it and evaluate it and try to find out the information we need. What makes you most optimistic about this group, Chris? You know, last year, uh, it, it is what it is. 111 wasn't uh, much fun, uh, but we we gained a lot of experience with a ton of players. We played 30 first and second year players. We have a lot of guys coming back that have played. We've got a small senior class because of two grad transfers. We got up to a whopping seven seniors on our team, <laughs> but we have 27 juniors that have played and been in our, our program for three years now. And I'm really excited about watching those guys. Uh, we had a great spring. Uh, I think our culture and chemistry on our football team is uh, tremendous right now. They work really hard and. And these guys are hungry to go out and show that last year was just an anomaly. It's not who we are, and it's not what we're going to be. You know, it's interesting you guys were talking about transfers, and, of course, that is going to be a theme, I think, of your year, that you did bring in some guys who it looks like could compete. You mentioned the quarterback spot. Where else do you think you've been able to reinforce this roster with guys who, who you think could end up playing key roles uh, tight end um, uh, we lost a couple tight ends to transfers and we gained a couple tight ends through t transfers and I really like that room right now it's a room that we have to have more production out of both in the run game and in the pass game uh, and I think we will get that through some of the transfers and a quarterback so we, we moved to Jonathan Lewis who was a quarterback for us to tight end he had a great spring I'm really excited about him and then on the defensive side of the ball Drew Singleton a linebacker who was from New Jersey former uh, number one player in the state uh, transferred in and we're really excited about him those are probably the, the main guys that we're going to uh, rely on to try to help us. Finally, people will hear a lot about this during the course of this year. It's the 150th anniversary of the first ever college football game, which, of course, was played on Rutgers campus against Princeton. You're the birthplace of college football. What is Rutgers doing special to commemorate this season? Yeah, well, first of all, we're really excited uh, about our place in history in college football and that we can be, say, we're a part of the beginning of college football. And each week there are some special events that we're going to have surrounding home games, bringing former players back, uh, uh, recognizing uh, different eras uh, throughout the year. You know, we've got a special uniform release that we'll have here at the end of uh, July. Uh, we're going to wear the original replica of the uniform that they wore in the first game uh, during the season. Not the helmets, though. Not the, <laughs> not, not, not the leather helmets. Please. Not the ones you would have worn. I like that. Whoa. Oh, I know you'd like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, like that I set you up for that coach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. there, there were no helmets in the 1890s. <laughs> the helmets didn't come until the 1890s. I think, I, when, and you know yeah. that. You know. Yeah. There's, there's a pretty good resource you might want to yeah. dive into. There's some literature, perhaps. That's going to be exciting for the kids because they yeah. have no idea. What, what it's going to be yet? No, they, they don't. Uh, I'm excited. I've seen them. I'm, I'm really excited about it. It's different. It's outside the box thinking, and it's going to be pretty cool. Wow. Okay. All right, All looking right. forward to seeing that. Chris Ash, looking forward to seeing the Scarlet Knights in action as well. Thanks, as always, for your time. Really appreciate yeah, thank it. Thank you, Coach. guys.